Spaniards are still enjoying the sun at pavement cafes. It's been a hot summer and a difficult winter lies ahead. The Spanish government has passed legislation limiting air conditioning to a low of 27 degrees and heating to a maximum high of 19 degrees. Bars, shops and offices will have to keep doors closed to guarantee energy efficiency. And bar owners in Madrid alone claim the new rules will cost them more than 500 million euros in lost business. We have to face the autumn and winter with a maximum indoor temperature of 19 degrees. This is likely to decrease business by around 3%. Public buildings will have to switch their lights off and shop fronts will be dark at night, while some short and mid-distance trains have been made free to boost public transport use. With these measures, Spain is hoping to meet the EU's target of 7% in energy savings. The new rules will have a major impact inside bars, but some are wondering what's going to happen outside on the terraces. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, Spaniards have become used to being outdoors, even in winter. In Madrid, there are 3,000 terraces with outdoor heating. The city council plans to ban gas heaters, but even with only electric radiators, outdoor cafes will burn through 78,000 kilowatts per hour a day. It makes no sense to ask supermarkets to put doors on dairy product shelves and at the same time allow terraces to heat the street air with radiators. We need a fast-track decree to stop this before winter. Spain hopes the new energy-saving rules will be enough to meet the EU targets, at least for a few months. But despite capping gas prices, electricity bills keep rising. Energy is now three times more expensive than a year ago. To look more into the Spanish government's measures, I'm joined by Joan Groithard, who's in charge of energy saving at the Ministry for Ecological Transition. Thank you for being with us. Tell us, are these measures being applied by the Spanish government enough? Well, for us, they're just a first package, a way to start with some initial steps. They're measures with little downside, the kind of actions that don't require effort or pain, because they need scarcely any investment. They're easy measures to implement. We're currently in the process with the autonomous regions, the industrial actors and the political parties of collecting proposals to make a broader contingency plan that will include additional measures. Spain is not as exposed as other European countries to Russian gas. Why do we have to make these efforts? It's true that Spain historically has had very little interconnection with the European electricity markets. This means that for many years Spanish consumers haven't been able to benefit from Russian gas, when Russian gas was cheap and plentiful. Spaniards didn't benefit from cheap electricity like other European countries, and that meant Spain has had to make big investments in regasification plants and other infrastructure to be more self-sufficient. In the current context, it seems the tables have turned, and now Spain, with its infrastructure that's cost a lot of money to Spanish consumers, is in a much stronger position. We're much more resilient. So we're concerned about the coming winter, of course, but perhaps a bit calmer than our colleagues from the rest of Europe. And in this context, I think there's a fundamental pillar of the European Union, which is solidarity. So the reduction in energy consumption that we're implementing in Spain, with measures that, I repeat, are very easy to put in place, will allow us to contain prices, increase our gas reserves as much as possible, and eventually it will also allow us to share any surplus gas, given our infrastructure capacity with other countries like France, for example, using our existing interconnection. Thanks very much for being with us.